Are you ready? Good day, owners, and welcome to uh, week nine in review and a look out to week ten. That's right, we're into week ten already, and that means we've only got four more weeks until we uh, start the playoffs. So, uh, folks that are trailing a little bit behind still got a chance. Nobody's really out of it unless you can put uh, four wins together here and uh, some uh, strategic losses uh, from your cohorts. Uh, everyone right now has a shot at the uh, playoff picture. However, this is the outside shot for a couple of teams. So uh, let's uh, get started. First off, wearing a little orange today instead of my usual Pats gear. Uh, not celebrating the Denver Broncos, but um, bringing awareness to a condition called CRPS, Chronic Regional Pain Syndrome. It's something my uh, daughter suffers from and something that was picked up and activated just from uh, stepping on a nail in her last year of high school and has caused her uh, quite a bit of pain and misery from that. So today is CRPS Awareness Day. So there's a link at the bottom if you're interested in checking out what's going on with her. Uh, another shout out, uh, we got to see, uh, I got to see pictures anyways of uh, Mark and his son uh, Carter down at the Washington Redskins game as they took on Atlanta. And it was like seeing a kid at Christmas morning down there with pictures coming from Mark. So shout out to you and getting down there. Good for you. And like always, nothing better than going and seeing an NFL game. Also, another reminder, our trade deadline is tomorrow. It ends uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, so it'll be 10 o'clock our time tomorrow. Okay, the first game we're going to look at is the uh, much-anticipated battle in our house, Battle of the Maze, as we uh, put out some pretty fun side bets there. So uh, the 5-3 and three Tuscany Mayhem took on the 4-4 four and four Acadian Assassins. Even with Patrick Mahomes putting up his uh, 42 points, on uh, 375 uh, passing yards and three touchdowns. Second and ten. Mahomes sets up the screen. Hunt. Hunt. 30. 20. Touchdown, Chiefs. Well, and that's what they've been doing all season. Mayhem was led uh, by another Kansas City teammate of his, Travis Kelsey, who put up 28 points. On his 99 yards, couldn't get that one yard from a bonus, and two touchdowns. 311 and counting. And zone. Oh, what a catch. What a throw. And a touchdown. Tuskegee Mayhem took this one easily over the Acadia Assassins. 147.5 to 115. Second game we're going to look at is uh, Mac Daddy's Madhouse five and three uh, took on last year's champ Jethro's Heroes who are uh, four and four. Drew Brees had huge numbers in that uh, New Orleans Rams game as he put up 346 yards and put up four touchdowns for a total of 48 points for Mac Daddy's Madhouse. He also saw good numbers from uh, Kareem Hunt and the Vikings defense who helped him out. Play action, Breeze keeps, floats, Watson, touchdown! What a play, what a throw, what a half. The other side of the ball, we saw Jethro's Heroes, whose quarterback was also in this New Orleans battle, as uh, Joff put up 39 points on 391 yards and three touchdowns. On Eli Apple there. Rams get the snap away, no challenge. That ball rolled at the end. Here's one for Cooks. The former Saint down inside the 15. Not much defense in those games. Uh, Brandon Cook and the tight end Jeffrey uh, Hooverman also had good games for Jethro's Heroes. However, the tramp fell to Mac Daddy's Madhouse 160.5 to 137. Third game we'll look at was Conley's Crusaders at 4 and 4. 
uh, saw a bi-ridden force these Fokkers who were sitting at 3 and 5. Elva Kamara led the Crusaders with 82 yards of rushing and 34 yards catching, uh, which totaled up to three touchdowns as well, which gave him 33 points in that New Orleans battle. Uh, not far behind was his Bears defense, who put up 30 points and scored two touchdowns of their own to help him. Third down and eight. Braves has a man. That's Camara. He's got another. Forsey Spockers only had one standout in his team, and that was uh, Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson put up 23 points on 213 yards and two passing touchdowns. Watson looking to throw. Back of the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Conley easily took this one, 141 to 102.5. Game four saw a Magic School Bus trying to get back in the win column with his 4-4 four and four record as he took on a uh, two-tired who was also sitting at 4-4 four and four, and a winner of their last two matches. School Bus was led by uh, Kristen McCaffrey who put up 79 yards of uh, rushing for two touchdowns and also another 78 yards uh, pet receiving passing and gave him a total of 30 the offense points. here. You got a receiver in the backfield. You're going to fake a screen out to your right of Cam Newton's right. All he wants to do is get the ball to his guy, Christian McCaffrey. And wow, <laughs> that's going to be on some highlights across the. Matt Ryan uh, put on a show for uh, Mark and his son in Washington and put up 350 yards for four passing touchdowns for 41 points. On first down, quick hitter. They go outside and Coleman makes the move. Tevin Coleman. Uh, for too tired. Also, DeAndre Hopkins and Julio Jones. Uh, Julio, who has also got his first touchdown of the season uh, in front of Mark, uh, put up 31 points each. This gives uh, too tired this week's uh, high score as they took this matchup 125 and a half to 169 and a half. With the 169 and a half obviously being this week's high score. Congratulations to Zach and Brad. Our dog of the week it was a backup lineup for the Steel Curtain, who sat at six and two, took on the absentee owner Huey's Hogs at four and four, with the Hogs in Washington watching Alex Smith put up three hundred and six yards and one touchdown for twenty three points, and the Redskins lost. Steel Curtain got thirty four points from a rehabbed Josh Gordon, who put up one hundred and thirty yards and one touchdown. One hundred ninety three. <laughs> Wide open. Well, there were two guys who were there, but it's Josh Gordon, the second guy, into the touchdown. This low scoring affair was hard to watch, but still, Curtin took it with his Wayne Gretzky score 99 over Huey Sogg's 90. And just as a um, stats thing, uh, our poll this week, if you click on it on your app, it's available on the app or on the website, on the front page of the website, is. Uh, how many times has someone won with less than 100 points in the history of the league? So in the last six years, how many times has somebody won uh, with less than 100 points? And I think the options are 1, 2, 5, 10, and 12. So uh, go on there, fill out the poll, see how you do. The answer will be next week. Or I'll put it on the smack for uh, late Sunday. Our game of the week. So, uh, and Gloria Stafford's taking on the struggling, uh, Gloria Stafford's two and six, taking on the struggling Lucas Kickers three and five in uh, what we dubbed last week as the Battle of the Basement. Tom Brady and James White uh, made the comeback uh, in the New England late game on Sunday to get uh, Stafford into the lead. James Conner once again makes you wonder if uh, Le'Veon Bell will ever get back into the lineup in Pittsburgh as he put up 33 points with 107 rushing yards and one receiving touchdown. Steelers try to take the lead. Roethlisberger hooks a pass underneath. Caught by Connor. He's got the angle. Connor bangs his way in for the touchdown. Luke Ass's, uh running backs responded. Uh, Tevin Cook, Coleman put up 31 points, but she was led by uh, Michael Thomas, the wide receiver for New Orleans in that shootout down in uh, the Superdome, as he put up 51 points and was the team leader. He had 211 yards uh, receiving and one touchdown. Lady, 
Kamara starts in the slot. Passes to Thomas. He's gone. Touchdown, Saints. Lucas is now uh, six in a row, and that streak continued as she lost to Stafford, who uh, took it 155 to 152 in this uh, tight game. A uh, feature I haven't been doing uh, this year, which I had done in other years past, was the top fantasy football players of the week. Uh, this week, I'm going to do it by position. So uh, the number one quarterback this week was Drew Brees. He's owned by Mac Daddy's Madhouse. He put up 48 points. The running back was Kansas City's uh, Kareem Hunt. He put up 38 points, also on Mac Daddy's team. Wide receiver uh, was Michael Thomas on the Lucas Kickers, who put up 51 points. The tight end was Travis Kelsey. He put up uh, 28 points, and he sits on my team on the Tuscany Mayhem. Defensive player was uh, Danielle Hunter, Minnesota Vikings, put up a hut, 29.5 points. Uh, defense special teams went to the Bears on Conley Crusaders. He put up, uh, they put up 30 points, and I believe they had uh, two touchdowns. And the kicker, Cody Parker, Chicago, and that was Mac Daddy's Madhouse as well. And got 12 points from him. Uh, next week's matchups: we have Luke Ass Kickers at uh, three and six taking on Tuscany Mayhem at six and three. Luke Ass has lost her last six games. Mayhem's uh, got a win, and uh, in their head-to-heads over the years, uh, Mayhem leads us uh, three games to two. I'm going to take uh, uh, Mayhem in this one for the win over Luke Ass. Our next matchup sees Huey's Hogs taking on uh, at four and five, taking on a Gloria Stafford at three and six. Hogs is coming off a loss. Stafford's coming off a win. And uh, in this matchup, head to head, they've met three times, and Huey Hogs has taken it all three times. And I'm going to predict that he takes it for a fourth time as well. We've got uh, Jethro's Heroes coming off a loss at four and five, taking on Conley's Crusaders coming off a win at five and four. And uh, I know these this guys have matched up four times in the past, and they're tied at two and two. So this one will be the tiebreaker, and I'm going to take uh, Conley's Crusaders for the win in that, which I will appease uh, Canadian's Assassins, which uh, could get them ahead of him and maybe into the playoff bracket next week if that happens. Forsey's Fockers, 3-6, and six, taking on Steel Curtain at 7-2. and two. Steel Curtain has come off two wins in a row. The Fockers are sliding the other way. They lost their last five. Week 9 was the week to uh, get the win against the Curtain, and that didn't even happen. In their head-to-head, they've only played each other twice. They're tied at 1-1. One and one. Uh, I think this is going to be a blow. A steel Curtain takes this, I think. We've got two tired, 5-4, and four, taking on Mac Daddy's Madhouse at 6-3. and three. Two tired has had three wins in a row. Mac Daddy's has five wins in a row, head-to-head. Mac Daddy's taking this four out of the five games, four games to one in that one. This is a tight one. Um, when you looked at the uh, ESPN assessment of the game today, it was .2 difference. However, Mac Daddy did not have their defense in the lineup, so that could tip them over. The other big thing with that, both their quarterbacks are playing up on the Great Lakes, Cincinnati and Cleveland, and uh, weather could play a factor in those games, so keep an eye on the weather. Nice days up there, should be good. Bad days up there, maybe not so good. And our last matchup we'll look at is the Acadian Assassins at 4-5, and five, taking on Magic Skull Bus, also at 4-5. and five. Uh, Skull Bus is Kirk Cousins is on by next week, so it looks like Fitzmagic is going to be in the lineup, and uh, that's what he'll need to uh, as he takes on uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, and so that will be the battle there, and just because of that lineup, I'm going to take Kane Assassins uh, with the win on that one. Okay, this week, I won't forget, team buys. We've got uh, Denver Broncos, uh, Baltimore Ravens, Texas, Houston Texans, and the Minnesota Vikings all on buy this week. Uh, Thursday night football sees the Carolina Panthers take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. That should be a good matchup. On Monday night football, why this ever uh, got into the system or they didn't pull and put somebody else in there. But we got the New York Giants at 1 and 7, taking on the San Francisco 49ers at 2 and 7. That's it for me this week. Uh, have another great week. Uh, take care, enjoy the football, and uh, here's a little shot of Mark and his son 
uh, doing the NFL experience uh, down in Washington. Take care, everybody.